Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to EG vs. Mouseport, game 2 of a best of 2 series. EG, really, really ahead. I know it's a win, it's just a 1 point win, but it's, it's a morale that they're shutting down. They're cutting Mouseport and trying their best to take yet another game from Mouseport. I am Luminous, he's LD, we're both going to be casting this one, both from the commentaries.com. LD, what, what's your thought after game number 1? Mouse sports, I'd like to, you know, we talked about it last game. Let's see some heroes that, you know, have a little bit more offensive firepower here that can contribute earlier. Don't let EG set the pace of the game. Don't let them control the momentum. They get a like at the start, but whenever you open with like it, that does mean most likely two solo lanes for your team. Still a lot of flexibility. It puts pressure on that supporting cast, but if they get the right heroes, they won't have access to the Rubik. So for me, the big one, I, I mean, we're talking about hero players getting the right heroes. We talked about Kuroki Storm. But I always, I look at Sing Sing, not just because of last game. And by the way, for anyone who didn't watch game one, Sing Sing got massacred. Wasn't entirely his fault. To some degree, his position wasn't perfect. But mostly, uh, just EG really picking on him, choosing to focus on him. But who is he going to play? And where will, and how will his landing stage go? What are EG going to do to try and shut him down early? Yeah, it's it's a big mystery. But for now, with the, when you have Mouseport picking up a Lycanthrope, my question is, do you, is that one of your jungler rules? Because... Like, for example, X Freedom, right, for Team Zenith. Uh, he normally plays a support, but he grabs a Lycan, he even buys a chicken, and, and goes in the jungle and grab farming. Or do you actually move one of your quote unquote carry players onto that hero, like Team CLG would with PyCat? So it's, it's always a big question, and I wonder how Mouseport will be answering that question. Meanwhile, EG, they, they will pick the same hero. They're okay with what they have last game, they're happy with their performance, and they'll try to see if they can do it again. I'm honestly a little surprised that Murphy is not getting a ban. He, you know, I can understand not banning out the Invoker. Uh, he's a hero that can be shut down. He's not always high impact. Have we seen a bad Morphling today? Have we seen a bad Morphling in this tournament? Maybe a handful, but the majority have been very successful. And also, I'm again, the Morphling wasn't the reason they lost that game, but he just, he's a hero if he gets the openings. He can make use of them better than pretty much anyone else in the game. As far as the liking question goes, I'm not sure. I believe for Mouse it is Black who generally plays it. Right. And that's... Well, that could that could shift. It, it, you know, I suppose it could be 1437. They don't have their jungler. That's come with me. So, uh, you know, the, it, normally if it's going to be sort of that support player, it's the one who plays their other jungling hero, uh, you know, like X Freedom. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see who it's going to be. Right. At this point, I see Mouse board as 1437 and four farming oriented player. Again, they could play multiple roles, but I think they're most comfortable at, at a farming role. And when you add a Lycanthrope, when you add a Lycanthrope to the equation, that will help out quite a bit. Again, going back to the fact that uh, you could have your fourth player swinging into a farming role, and that's going to work out fine. Windrunner is going to be the second pick, a high impact hero for high impact players. Again, that's my theme for this, uh, this cast. And I wonder what the last one is. Uh, I just love the Windrunner here because they give you the initiation range. Uh, last game, they didn't have it too much, to be fair. Uh, they had an anti-mage that could have blinked in, but there's a lot of range, a lot of chase with this lineup. And to be honest, Mouseport is as, as at its best when it's chasing down heroes, chasing down enemies. Already, already I like the dress so much better. Queen of Pain, Windrunner, uh, heroes with escape mechanisms, heroes who can be very strong in the lane. Uh, and, you know, as well, some ways to deal with the Morphling and the Invoker, the chasing powers there. The burst damage, if you try to go shotgun versus this Queen of Pain, she could easily turn around and uh, flip that shotgun on its head and end up hurting you with it. So I like the picks better. They're also very survivable, uh, and I think that's really important to have against EG. EG, they like to set up ganks. It's not really for Protect 1, but it's just a lot of pressure from the team. And generally, Fear is the primary beneficiary. How will EG follow up? Shadow Demon is available. It worked really well last game to set up the Sun Strikes, uh, although it was mostly Demon setting those up with Janata and then some Burrow Strikes as well. But I think, I think Shadow Demon would be a nice stable pick here, leaves your options open. Also a great way to deal with Lycan, we've seen it before, Lycan charges in, Lycan focuses a hero, and then you disrupt that hero, or you disrupt Lycan, and that gives you a couple extra seconds where his time is being wasted, he's not being efficient. Even if you don't live, it's going to help deal with that Lycan. Right. Now, to be fair, Shadow Demon is a very easy to pick off hero, and that might, might be the reason why they're not picking up very, very quickly, especially against heroes like Queen of Pain. It's suddenly, out of nowhere, it's a sonic wave, it's a screen of pain, and that's a lot of damage output. But for now, they're considering all their options. Last time, last game, we saw the Shadow Demon. This time, it's going to be Enigma. I imagine that's going to be Melk's hero. He's going to jungle it up. Uh, if you're going to be jungling your Lycan, we're going to try to match your farm and jungle ourselves Enigma as well. Now, obviously, both heroes are going to be very different in what they do. But one thing they do have in common is that they push very well early stages in the game. 
Absolutely. Enigma, the pick up here for EG. So that's going to be Milks here. They get a jungler. They get a hero. Uh, they can go to the jungle anyway. Certainly doesn't have to. Could be in the off lane. Uh, but most likely that's where we'll find him. Actually, it really depends on the rest of the draft. We're not sure where he's going to be. But they get a hero that has a lot of laning versatility. Also someone who can give light in trouble in the early game with harassment from the Eidolons or the Demonic Conversions, as they're called in Dota 2. Can give harassment uh, with the Malefist. And then more importantly in the late game, BK Black Hole is always going to be a nice way to deal with Lycan. Unless he is Aegis or unless he's buyback, which we've seen it a lot from Lycans as of late. They always seem to have one, if not both. So I'm slightly distracted here, making sure the stream is running fine. Getting a little bit of feedback here, but everything's good. Everything's good. But Shadow Demon ban, like you pointed out, as well as the Broodmother ban. Broodmother generally hero that Mouseport very much so employ, but I think this one is going for a little bit more ganking oriented. It j they just want to remove as many difficult kill uh, hero already. There's already a Morphling to deal with. They don't want anything else, especially when, when you're trying to go for a very chasing oriented lineup. They don't. They aren't really too good when it comes down to special lockdown. I guess if you have a Shadow Shaman with a blink, that's a different story. But that's not the case here. And it's a Bounty Hunter ban. A little bit of respect, a little bit of fear, maybe. Uh, that last game was uh, pretty insane. You know, Bounty Hunter. We saw he can do that. <laughs> he can do that harassment towards the jungle and the prophet. He can do that to Lycan too. And if you give her Jack a big creep, that is a huge detriment to Lycan's farm. And like in, once he's, if he gets the good start, he spirals out of control very quickly. So it could deal with him in the jungle. Uh, it's not a bad ban. They, these heroes also need a lot of farm. But I think it's mostly just about that last game. Uh, they don't want to have to deal with Bounty Hunter again. A plus one. Always in Viz. Always a, or, always a threat to show up at any time. Why deal with it if you don't have to? After Prophet slipping through so late last game, I'm just eyeing the bans right now. And then trying to think, is there anybody that we missed? Any big high impact heroes that are still on the board? I don't think, I mean, obviously there's good heroes left, but is there anybody that's like normally banned at this point who's still available? I don't think so. I don't see anything right now either. Maybe but Lone Druid, through it, I guess, but that's about That's it. pretty big, especially as a Lycanthrope counter. But, I mean, Lone Druid is a hero that eat, requires a lot of farm, and Morphly and Volker, as well as Enigma, they eat up a lot of farm already. So I, I don't think that's going to be happening. Uh, as soon as we say that, though, <laughs> Melk's going to be showing us something. <laughs> Yeah, very slow pace to this draft. The last one was a little bit quicker. I think for Mouse, they're happy to slow things down, collect their composure, and get ready for game two. CM's the pick here. Another strong lane here. I like this choice a lot. A great great AoE as well to counter Ford Spirits, to counter the Enigma Demonic Conversions, and gives you a hero that can help fuel on of the Windrunner and the Queen of Pain needs, but equally importantly, the Lycan. But mostly, this is just about picking a strong laner with some great nukes early on to get them a decent start. Who will she be laning with is the question right now. It's most likely Queen of Pain mid, Windrunner in the off lane, and then CM paired up with somebody. Probably Lycan juggling, although it doesn't have to be. I suppose it could be CM Lycan and somebody else laning together, CM roaming around. We'll see. We'll see. But Mouse have their options right now. Yeah, I mean, this Crystal Maiden, she's going to give you the aura if you need it. She's going to give you the AoE nuking, and of course Frostbite. It's decent against certain spells out there. Not particularly a lot, a lot of heroes that's weak against Frostbite on the EG side. I just feel she's too slow. She's too clunky as a hero. 280 base movement speed. I don't think she could really keep up with the Lycan, the Windrunner, and, and Queen of Pain when they're galloping past. It's gonna be a Bane element, so... Whew, this is a wow. hero that we don't see too often, but this is... If you want to call it a counter to a Lycanthrope, or at least a hero that could assist you to do a lot against Lycan, this is it. Nightmare does a yeah. lot. If you want to fin script him, it'll go through BKB. It's great. This is it, and it's also a great counter to the Queen of Pain. You can't blink if you're being Fiend script. You can also be slept, you blink in, you try to drop your big combo, and at some point you're interrupted from doing so. And also, it, it, but mostly it just allows you to isolate heroes and deal with a smaller scale engagement, not have to deal with all the bursts simultaneously. The Queen of Pain burst, the Windrunner power shots, the Lycan right clicks. At any extra seconds you spend not dying as Time Enigma could come and drop the mech, Time Morphling can morph, can waveform away if he needs to do so. It's, it's very, to me, it, it, it's mostly a defensive pick, but it can be used offensively if they need it. Yep, I w Ooh, and here's a Tiny Whoa. from Mousebore. I wonder who's going to be playing the Tiny. Is it Sing Sing? Is it Bamboo? Those two love to play the Tiny. I imagine it is going to be Sing Sing, but that kind of throws out the equation. Morphling might not even be the heaviest carry in the game anymore. If Tiny gets that big stick, it's like Roosevelt. <laughs> What's that statement? 
What was that same Speak softly. It's like Teddy Roosevelt. Speak softly and carry a big stick. That's exactly <laughs> it. Once you pick up the axe after, he could carry just as about just as well as about anybody else. But it's a Bane Elemental. I wonder how how the laning situation is gonna be. Bane Elemental, believe it or not, he needs a lot of EXP and he needs a lot of gold. So let's see if it's gonna be one of those solo lane banes. We'll have to wait and see. As though they didn't have enough disables. Yes, for good measure. Let's pick up a Tide Hunter. Why the hell not? Says EG. So I think their team fight is secure at this point. Ravage, Black Hole, Invoker, and then Bane for all your single target needs. Those will serve fully. Probably going to be played uh, by Universe. I imagine. Actually, Universe might be on the Tide and Melk on the Bane. We'll see how they want to do it. Yeah, Melk on the Tide and Universe on the Bane. Either way, you're good. It is going to be a Sing Sing Tiny. I'm very excited for this. Although in competitive. Play. He generally does not go for the Mask of Madness. He generally does not go for the Phase Boots. Kuroki will be handling the Queen of Pain. 1437 on the Crystal Maiden. Bambo on the Windrunner. And Black will be playing the Lycan. Meanwhile, on the EG squad, we have Fear playing the Morphling once again. Milk is going to be playing on the Neighbor. Did they swap? I think they did. Universe now on Bane. Tie Hunter being played by Demon. He's going to be going the Long Lane. A lot of regeneration. And the last player is going to be Boba. If he's going for the Sunstrike Bill, which does not seem the case anymore, Blaze of Attack being picked up. Which is a shame, because he was hitting so many Sunstrike. But for now, we're going to see an EMP Tornado build. And they definitely need a the range. They need a the crowd control. And that's what the Quaswex build gives you. Bamboo already headed up to place some wards. Did some very quick shopping for him. In and out in a jiffy. And now the ward will go down to the pull camp. Probably going to be dewarded quickly, I imagine. Fear up top for the moment. Nobody backed him up. Some blows being traded. Demon trying to do some more of his own. But 1437 is here to usher him away. So that will not be placed... Uh, or sorry, he wasn't trying to ward. I guess he was just trying to scout things out. Uh, no wards actually Pretty up on him. play, actually, because that, that might be the last last play you see. You might see, like, three or four heroes, and you're dead. Uh, but he's right, okay. Yeah. They don't have too much. I think, you know, maybe if Queen of Pain's there as well, but realistically, she's probably not going to be there. So a little risky. But Demon likes to live on the edge. That's pretty much his style. Here we go. I'm going to check. Um, oh, the... they see him. They see him. Yeah, they do. And uh, Well, I think if they play it really chill, they play it really safe, once they wait for the crew wave to come, and they, they just surround him. And which uh, Demon's going to have a tough time to ping out. Oh, Demon. He does not know. He does not know what horrible situation, horrible predicament he's in right now. This would be a great start for Mask Wars. If they can find this kill, that will be absolutely huge. Sing Sing. Oh, this is... What is he doing here? Is he trying to pull the creeps away? That was a little odd. Yeah. Okay, he's maybe maybe trying to get the creep equilibrium a little bit closer to Demon. And now, are they going to make their move? They're not going to allow him to get level 2 from this, right? Uh, well, it's going to take a little more than this. And here we go. Uh, one of the creeps were denied by Enigma. Sing Sing, probably going to kill this creep wave and then immediately charge in there. What are they doing? They are really dancing around. A Demon slips out. The trap, he escapes. The opportunity to get the kill, if there was one, is gone now. And 1437 taking some damage, dropping the nuke in return. How do you feel about this lane? Well, how much will Demon get? Well, he just got some free XP for... <laughs> I, thought he, I thought he didn't deserve it, but hey, that that was fine. I think he's going to get quite a bit. Crystal Maiden is a support that in Darius's range should keep you out. But look at Tide. He doesn't really care. Once he gets to, he can actually get the Kraken. Look at him. He's actually fighting against CM. CM has to back off. I think... Demon's gonna get something. He's gonna get something. It might not be a quick level six, but it's gonna be good level three, four. We'll check back in a minute. But look at him oh. bullying the crystal made in a way. that is just brutal, man. And I, I was actually zooming in on it because I just think it's hilarious how crystal made it looks so pathetic and weak, and then there's just this massive mighty fish man stomping around, clubbing her to death with this gigantic anchor. Let's look at the other lanes, though. Off the bat, I noticed Melk is the high farmer. A lot of those are jungle creeps, but 9 and 1 already. Lycan only 6 and 0. Lycan is a bit of a slower jungler at the start than Enigma, so expect your mouth to be ahead for a little bit. In the middle lane, Brokey up against Bulba. Queen of Pain against Invoker. What is this, the third time we've seen this matchup today? It was a different hero winning each time. I generally think Queen of Pain is a little bit better. Mid can do a little more for a team, but top lane, Bambo trapped in place, and there's your sleep. Gonna damage him down, allow the wave to cool down. No, actually not gonna be enough, and he's gonna escape. The salve is there. Fear to net the mana for Oh, power shot, not gonna hit. Yeah, he was looking to cancel Morphling South. Fear see it coming, and he's gonna. Ooh, these range creeps gonna dodge Demon. those as well. Demon, I don't know, this is a little bold even for him. Is there a Nova? There is. 
but he's just too tanky. They can't kill him. Yeah, man. He's got a lot of tangles. Burned through four of them. Still got two left and that south, but that's fine. He's getting he's getting EXP, and that's what he really wants. Here you go, Black, though. He's getting relative free farm. It's going to be the Vlads. It's going to be the Dialing Courage. I wonder what it's going to be afterwards. Is it going to be Necrobook or BKB? But we have a long time to talk about that. It really depends on how the game's going to go. On the mid lane, though, the Wexley Invoker versus Queen of Pain. Uh, you talked about seeing a matchup time and time after again. What's your thought on this one? I, I really think Queen of Pain should have a bit of an edge, but Bulba has other things to say about that. Queen of Pain should not be losing the lane quite this hard. She is having an absolutely horrendous time. Kuroki sitting at 6-2. and two. Bulba up on top of the creep score at 13-6 and six as a Wex Invoker. Not too much damage. That means phase boot soon, and that means... He's going to keep on rolling. The reason I think Queen of Pain is a bit better here, she can push the wave, control the runes, and earlier on she has better base damage. Bulba hasn't had any backup either. That's normally the X factor for a lot of these Invoker players. Someone comes in, sets up a gank, like the Enigma. Maybe Melk will come and do it, but so far not showing any signs of it. Ooh, big smoke here. Look at Ty Hunter journeying all the way from bot to the mid lane into that Rapture, and they will smoke up together. Are they looking for a gank? For Kuroki, you talked about them being the X-Factor, and it's going to come right now. The Gush, the Cold Snap, oh, he blinks out just fine. And the economic investment, the time investment for EG not paying off. Yeah, quite high there. He is going to live, and that's why you pick these heroes for Mouse Sports, I think. You know, you, it, it, there's just so much more flexibility to be maybe a little bit out of position or to not look at the map for a second. Room to recover, and it really makes EG's aggression, their desire to get these early kills less effective. Demon always does this. Whether he's roaming from level 1 as Bounty Hunter, we well, see when he plays Rubik in the offlane, no matter what the hero is, he puts pressure on the other lanes. That's just what he does. It's what a good offlane player does in general. And Demon is one of the best at doing it. So the Queen of Pain pick allows you to, you know, for Demon to come in and he wastes that time, doesn't get anything out of it. But here's what EG is getting. Once again, it is a massively fat Morphling in exchange for an equally fat Tiny. What is Sing Sing going to go for? Normally when I see him play Tiny and competitive, although the last, maybe the last time I saw him he went solo mid, but he generally goes for Arcane Boots, he goes for Blink Dagger, more of the initiation ganker style. Do you think we're going to see that carry Tiny this game? Uh, I mean, it, it depends on how the game is going. They, he would really like to have Lycan to do the carry duty. Well, he plays, like you mentioned, is a very traditional Tiny. The Blink Dagger, the one-shot pop, and uh, go for the, these kills. And Nigma squishy, so is uh, the Invoker, so is the Bane Elemental. He can go, get, go for those kills. But if the Bane Elemental and the, the rest of the enemy team becomes annoying enough to make this game long, he, he might actually have to go back for that Axe Scepter. Yeah, well, the options are his, and that's the beauty of getting this amount of farm. Level 5 already is going to be maxing out Toss first for that extra damage. It is the more damage-efficient build to go for. Going to be hitting 6 soon, and then he can start to right-click a little bit harder, improve his last hitting, although, really, he's not missing any creeps. There's no pressure on him. That's a free farm Tiny and a free farm Lycan. This is a lot to give away for both teams, because they're also giving away a free farm Morphling. They're giving away a free farm Enigma on the side of Mouse. It's you know, this is the last game, EG, we're not giving anything to Mouse. In this game, they're giving away a lot, although they're getting something good in return. Ooh, it's gonna be I don't really see a clear advantage. I think it all comes down to execution in the mid-game. Well, it's going to be a three-man smoke gank here against a Windrunner. I don't think they even need a smoke yet. They're going to just waltz their way in. No wards. Look at the timing they're getting this gank. It's six minutes in, and that means the first first wards are down. They see Bambo. Bambo says, oh, shoot, I'm in the wrong neighborhood, and he is going to be going down. That's a first blood for Milk. And that's our first blood. Last game, it happened at about one minute. But once again, it is EG. But I love this adjustment for Mouse Sports. We saw some Lycans yesterday. Didn't come out of the jungle early and push. But as soon, I mean, even before they saw that gank coming, the pressure comes in bottom. The Wolves right clicking away. Tower will take a fall. Demon, the downside to doing this kind of ganking. And the tower almost denied by some illusions, it looks like, by the Invoker there. That's what Luby was holding his breath about. In the end, Black does claim it. And that's a big tower for him to get. Vlad's has to be coming pretty soon. The Courier also took some damage. Top lane, though, it is Kuroki. He's come in. He wants to make something happen for his team. It's going to hit it, too. Black Hole, will it be enough? It will not. Power Shot ends it, but not before Queen of Pain takes a fall. Two for two. Black Hole used. Ravage not available. It's only a level three Titan. What am I talking about? In comes Sing Seed as well, and he's going to pick up a kill. But at the expense of his own life, Fear gets a double, and that's not something you want to give away. Your free farm tiny. 
in exchange for a kill going to the free farm morphling. Yeah, he really underestimated the damage here from the more as well as those eidolons. And now look at Fear, he does not give a damn here. Last of the tower under Bamboo. It's probably gonna be gonna try to kill Bamboo. You know, he's gonna micro disillusion back. Look towards Fear teeping back the base. Indeed is doing so right now. He's gonna refill his bottle, refill all of his mana and come back full HP, full mana for even more harass. That exchange went very favorably for Morphling, got a whole bunch of kill for himself, and he's looking for a little bit more, he could come right back, and Bamboo's gonna be in big trouble. Them. And here we go, that's yeah, exactly what we see, there's a cold snap, couple more, yeah, wait for him for a kill, jeez. Wow, Three zero one Morphling. Again, we're seeing pretty efficient movements from EG, and once again, it's someone from Asports being picked on heavily, this time it's Bamboo instead of Sing Sing. We'll have to see if the difference matters. And I will say Windrunner, a better hero to recover than Shadow Shaman, that is for sure. But is it going to be enough opportunity to recover? If it's a Light of Heaven situation like we saw in the last series, uh, it might not be. But here we go, mid lane. It's Bulba and Viz looking for an opening. Kuroki lurking in the trees as well. Sing Sing's rotated in. Phase Boots picked up. But unlike TC's Tiny, he's not using this for Phase Boots to farm, to push, to right click creeps. He's using it to roam around the map instead of kills. A very different style. They do have a Lycan backing him up, so he doesn't have to be that primary farmer. But if you're going to roam like this, you want to set something up. Because right now, that bottom lane is empty. There's no pulling. There's no farming. It's just a dead economic zone from Outsports. At least for now, Black will come out. Ooh, toss in from the Crystal Maiden. There's a Frost by Nova Tornado. Everything being dropped. Boba tried to cast as much as he can, but he did not do it. Nice creative initiation from Tiny. I love to see things like that. And Sing Sing showing off at a big stage. But I love the warding here from the Dire as well. Look at the river completely being seen. And against Tiny and Aggressive Ganker, that is important. As I say that though, Sing Sing is wrapping around trying to look for them. And look at GG Universe and Melk. They're like, we see you, man. We'll, we'll just hang on this side of the map. They're hanging a little close to toss in here. Might not be too bad way to go. Kuroki, it's only a level 5 game. And in comes Sing Sing. Toss, Avalanche, the sleep. Great timing or not. Kuroki sets up. He punches that one through. Easy goal scored for him. Cleans up the kill of Melk. Demon bottom late has hit 6. Arcane Boots, Juan picked up. He's got pretty much everything he needs to be a big contributor. The next time they try a dive like that, Demon will most likely be there. And what do you know? TP scroll already secured. But how, is, how much ravage will it mean, actually? I mean, it's going to help you win a fight, perhaps. But here's the thing. Tiny could keep going even after he loses a fight. And he sees Demon. Avalanche just have a long initiation range. He's not going to go for it. He sees the invis, uh, regen rune. And that's kind of pretty big. You, you get a, basically a free wave of creeps and still have full mana uh, for your next engagement. Sing Sing is going to mow down the mid creep. I want to see Mousepore start to set up a couple of ganks. Either Invoker or on, this, on the Morphling up top. I think if you allow Fear to kind of farm up pick, he is going to be very, very dangerous. I don't think we're going to see a Scotty oh, rush. Sing Sing, thrown up in the air, will take a fall. Couple more right clicks. Mana Burn not going to do anything. The EMP will, in the end, claim him. It looks like no demon got that one with the anchor smash, I believe. I'm not so sure. Look how frail Mouse Sports is. 1437, very squishy. Queen of Pain, Windrunner. Even Tiny is not that tanky yet. I think Ravage is a huge nuke as well as the Disable that Norm provides. You talk about it a lot. The nuke damage can be huge to win them a team fight. And of course, the stun is great too. I Now, the, the one thing I'll say is Queen of Pain can dodge that reasonably easily. 1437 gets put out. EMP, Tornado, Teeman looking for the kill. Will claim that kill. And on the high ground, it's Bamboo looking for a Shackle. The toss in, the avalanche, but there's the Ravage turning the fight around. Shackle on two. No, not going to latch. It looked good, but he doesn't find it. In comes Kuroki, the right click, the shadow strike, the toss on top of it all. Icing on the cake for Sing Sing. He steals that one from, under, from out from under Kuroki. But either way, they get a bunch of kills. What an incredible avalanche toss from Sing Sing. So much damage on the three heroes. You toss them in, avalanche back, and that's exactly what I mean. Tide Hunter buys back, but what does it mean though? He has no ravage, and that's a 150 seconds without ravage. Mouse hero, they are efficient with low mana, but they do see Mouse. That's why they're going for a black. Completely gets picked off. Shackle shot, not logic. Oh man, they were trying to ninja that one through. It was not enough blinking here. Oh, but he gets grip. Boba's gonna be fine. Kuroki answers back. Oh no, Kuroki. Getting pick off, Mouse 1437, so slow, even with boot speed. Wow, that buyback, with, even without the Ravage, just the presence of a TIE Hunter, picking off that uh, Lycanthrope, and now stealing the Aegis, this can be a huge blunder uh, for Mouseport. And if Fear picks and up this Aegis, this is going to be horrible. 
And with fear, with fear, they can get this quickly. He's not actually morphed to agility, but he doesn't need to. They have vision. They know that Mouse aren't going to be fighting without their Lycan, without their Quap. And Sing Sing does the best he can. He pushes out mid. Now he's going to look to rotate top. Deal with the creep way there. Not too far off a Blink Dagger if that's the route he wants to go. If he wants a Point Booster, he can pick that up too. We're going to find out soon what his item selection is. It looks like he's probably saving for Blink. Not going to opt to buy anything from the side shop. Lycan dies and gives away an Aegis. That is a big loss. He does have a Vlad's medallion, but he would love to have that second life. It allows you to do so much more. It's not even just about the second life. It's about how much more aggressive you can be with the first life. Pushing towers, knowing that no matter what, you have a good chance at escaping. And it also gives your team time to show up. So if you're a little bit out of position, you can run towards them. And then by the time they actually lock you down, kill you once, your team might be there to make it a big win. Yeah, don't forget that before level 16, he does have a fairly long cooldown as ultimate. So having that second life is just that extra layer of re reassurance when your ultimate is on cooldown and things of that nature. Sing Sing and uh, Kuroki looking to push that mid lane. Here comes the next creep wave. Toss does do some damage to the tower and so does these wolf. These souls do quite a bit more and they are going to bring down to tier 1 relatively for free. But it's not really free when EG is going to get a tower on the bot lane. Especially when Morphling and Volker is going to be doing it. There's Glyph. Are they going to really TP it? No, they're going to just race. What a race here at Black Hat. Ooh, here comes Melk. Malif is not being cast. They want Crystal Maiden. Crystal Maiden so slow. Crystal Maiden knows she's dead. Going to be trying to juke as long as possible. They're, mm, well, good try. Good try from 1437. But, they want Melk. Wow, they they're going to go right in. The Black Hole gets tossed back. The Black Hole does. How does it hit? But that's fine here. Melk pops a mech. He's going to be fine. And huge brain sap. Kuroki still slept by the Nightmare. But that Black Hole, that was some crazy angling. Yeah, and in the end, everybody escapes except for Tiny. That's the big loss. CM, not too big of a deal to lose her. Two kills, but for a Ravage and a Black Hole. Pretty big investment, but now they can push mid. If they get the tier 2, that would be worth it. But great reaction by Mouse. Immediately, the mobility pays off. Fear spots? It looks like he spotted Bamboo running to defend. But Kuroki going to be pressuring top. At least try to do some damage to the tier 1. I don't think it's low enough for him to get it. But no, EG. The respawns are too fast. They back off. Black in the end, the bottom tower, it was claimed by Fear, and Black is going to start pushing out this lane. Treads picked up on him. We're going to find out soon what that first big item is. Yep. Necrobook or BKB? What's your, what's your thought on it? I mean, there's Black Hole, there's Fiend's Reap. Uh, whereas, you know, Necrobook gives you a little bit more buffer zone against AoE. The Mana Burn's pretty good against uh, more really, I mean, it's, it's good for a whole bunch of reasons. Yeah, the mo that... The Mana Burn is so good against really all their heroes. I mean, the Morphling, the Invoker, all these heroes rely heavily on their mod. Tidehunter, not quite as reliant. He'll probably get his Ravage off no matter what, but Enigma and Bane, it would be very effective versus them too. I think Necrobook would be a great item choice for him. If it's not a Necrobook, we've seen we've seen some other odd stuff, but that would be the guess. So we'll, we'll let the players decide if it's going to be something weird instead of trying to hypothesize too much. Uh, but everybody for EG just hiding at this tier 1, they are definitely afraid. Not even smoke, not trying to bait, just hiding at the tower. Mouse journeying around. And the reason knows something's up. And the reason the mouse can't play this aggressive is because those long cooldown of the ultimates. And that's why each is staying as three or four. They can't farm as freely. And that's one of the downsides when you play this kind of big AoE, but long cooldown base spells. Kuroki though can't be caught out alone because I'm Malefus, can be the end of him. Here we go, he blinks out immediately, and look at how quick the TP is. Doesn't even want to stay long enough to find out what spells are waiting. Meanwhile though, mouse sport looking at the tier, just pot shots on the tower, not really real damage being done. And uh, uh, Sing Sing, he's uh, coming. Long range tornado. And now Bamboo tries to help the CM. Might cost him his own life. There's the cold snap. Will it be enough? The DMP as well. And then comes Universe. Feeds Grip. He just wants a damn kill. And he's going to get it. No. Demon's going to get it. Demon snagging that. It is going to bring him closer to sort of defiance. Arcane Boots, as mentioned, already picked up. So he's getting some good farm. Sing Sing, 20... 20... 20 hundred gold and 90 on top of it. He's very close to the Blink Dagger. I'm assuming that's the item selection, because anything else he would want, he probably could just about buy right now. But if he doesn't, oh, if he dies here, this will be so bad. He's going to have to hope it back. No, the four step in. He, he's he's bought the blink. He's bought the blink. Okay, just got it at time. But still, it's not a, not a good kill to give way to Invoker, and also fear getting the assist go to that one. Yeah, Mousebore is getting picked off here and there, and it just shows you that EG is rotating very, very good. And because they survived for this long time, look at that Ravage is back up. Black Hole is back up in 8 seconds. 
EG could just go bulldoze one way or another. Like they go mid if they want to, they go top if they want to. They have so much options now. Back in mid lane, Kuroki is going to get driven back. Top's going to get defended. Black going for it right now, but the cold snap, oh, hurting him so much. And he, with Melkin position, they are going to just deny the tower. EG is just more efficient with their roams. They're more efficient with their counter ganking. And because of that, they're getting more gold, more EXP. They are. Mouth Sports still have a lot of heroes that can get quick kills that can set things up. Necro both picked up on Kuroki. Tornado only catching the minions. There's your Malefist looking for a black hole. Four step in. Will there be anything else on top of it? No. Fiend's grip is cooling down. Black charges back in. I really don't think Mouse can take a fight when these ults are up. I think you're with me on that one. Are they going to try to, though? Demon runs in. Probably not the best path, but he'll be fine. Fear pressuring mid. Fear, the forgotten man in this game, just how he likes it. Ethereal Blade picked up. I think he's had it for a minute or two, maybe. Fifth, 16, 17 minute Ethereal Blade for Fear. The shotgun's online, and there are a lot of tasty treats waiting for him. Well, he's got to be somewhat careful as well. He's only got 1,000 HP, and Tiny could definitely work on him. He's seen Blink Dagger, Avalanche Toss, got a hit. It does not. Oh, no. Missing that combo. And now it goes the other way. Black, so very low. Tornado, one more right click. That's going to do the job. EMP draining the rest of Sing's mana. Sing on the run. He's trying to ball though through, but look at how surrounded he is. Oh, man. Sing had no chance. And with two dead and all their ultimate being retained, EG is looking for this tier top, top tier two. And perhaps they could even rotate down mid if they want to do so, but very good job by Kuroki pushing out the mid lane. He knows he's going to lose top, Try their, tries his best not to lose mid afterwards. You know, my I guess the thing that I'm looking at right now for mass sports is I just feel like they're, they're Tiny and Queen of Pain spent so much. You talked about efficiency moving around the map. These heroes really look, look need at Bamboo and, and Fear right now. Oh god. <laughs> Look at how deep Fear is chasing. But sorry, back to your point about uh, no, no, efficiency. No. Glad you caught that kill. The tower is going to take some big damage now. Let's see if they can actually get the Rex. That's going to be the big thing. With Ravage, with Black Hole, and being on the high ground, I don't think they have to back, but they disagree. Avalanche, toss. There's your tornado. Ravage hits on four. Great Ravage. Black Hole, only a bamboo. Not as good. In comes Kuroki. Big ultimate. And the stream of planes. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Like it on the chase. Demon going to take a fall. Demon will fall. Without fear, they don't have the damage. They overextend. They get picked off. I was wrong. Mouseports do have the burst they need. And EG give away a lot there. Yeah, definitely. They use their Ravage, they use their Black Hole. They didn't get too much of anything. They force a buyback. That's great. Tower is a 6 HP. That's decent. <laughs> it's going to get denied sooner or later, I imagine. Here's the thing. Look at how aggressive Mouse is. They know that they can fight in the next 150 seconds. They're diving for that tier 2. And there's really nothing EG could do about it. I think Morphling could come in and try to shotgun something. And yeah, indeed he is doing so. But he has to make that replicate. He has to be careful. Because one misstep, Tiny will find him and Tiny will kill him. As well as the Queen of Pain, although the ult's down, the scream still will hurt quite a lot. Same thing, the Blink Dagger was picked up there, the big initiation for them. Can he keep the ball rolling? Blink in, catches Bulba, the Wolves scouting for him. EMP Tornado on two though, and now Fear, he's got the shotgun, assassinates Kuroki, turns attention towards Sing Sing out of mana, wands up, is gonna be able to TP away. No, the adaptive catches him, blocked in, the rock will fall, wicked sick, double kill for Fear getting too much right now i have to say even though that last fight went bad top they never lost their morphling fear no longer forgotten you got to pay attention to him now because he's 7 0 and 4 leading the charge he's about to die, to, creeps. He's gonna die to creeps does he just want the free fountain trip i guess so he just does respawn soon maybe that was intentional maybe it was it yeah was. i mean they they were about to push he wanted to be full hp it looked pretty awkward uh but i don't think fear would make an elementary mistake like that uh, and he is going to be picking up a teleport scroll and a ring of ultimate orb. Yep, there, there's an ultimate orb. It's going to be a Manta style, I imagine. But we've seen players do this build. You rush the EB and go back for the Lincolns. I think Lincolns is okay in this game. Shackle, um, there's a frostbite you should dodge. But aside from that, I'm not too sure how much you're dodging, though. Yeah, I'm not too sure either. It's really nice versus Tiny, though. Because you, if, 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 if he's the one who jumps in first, you're not going to eat the combo. And that's where the big damage comes from. Right. So if, if that's the choice, I think it is, because of how much burst it does, I think that is a decent option for him. Smoke here. Middle lane. Sing Sing looking for it. Uh, he's, he's blinking in, but he's not doing enough burst damage to actually one-shot people, and that's exactly where you want to be. Eidolons are nearby. Both teams know each other. It's, it's up to something. 
Roshan's gonna be back very soon. That's why the Radiant's going for a pickoff. If you can't win off, it's huge. But look at what Morphling is doing. He can push, he's gonna force a TP, he's gonna replicate back. This is such a good hero to have when you're in a situation like this where you need to Roshan. Uh oh. He's losing HP and they're gonna run cross path into each other. Fear is gonna wait for him out. He's actually gonna go for a kill. Sing Sing now sees it. He's not gonna go up. And the ju tree jukes begin. Sing Sing too afraid to find out where the shotgun is. He's afraid that his enemy is actually doing the roach. But the enemy is actually hunting. And Fear is in position to actually start a party with some shotguns. Oh, replicates into the back of the conga line of his team. Yeah, Fear will be the one visible hero. But there's no vision for Mouse. They're playing blind and smoke ganking when you're in the dark is very dangerous in high level Dota. But they're going to go for it. They're actually going to smoke into Roshan and spotted by EG. Sentry wards, paints going up, left, right, and center. Kuroki, the first one to be revealed, explodes. Not even a chance. Rabbit, tornado as well. Black runs in, but immediately Fiend Script, the great counter to that. Oh no! Shackle on two, a better counter to Fiend Script. Damn, Bo, there's the, there's the black hole. Four stepped away, but that will not cancel it. He will take a fall as well. Two down for Mouse. Did anybody buy back? Is it really only two? Bambo now on the run. No, they're just trotting back to base, which means EG a little bit healthier. Looks like they're in better position if they want to go for Roche. Bobo, though, still chasing Bamboo. Will he really escape here? Could four step one of the high ground or so no, what could he even do? I guess try and four step away. He's Ooh, gonna just try and find Bulba, breaks his ankles, but there you go. The cold snap, the gush, the four step into the creeps, might try to die neutral. Shackle, anchor smash. No, Bulba's gonna be the one who claims it. Good effort, it just wasn't enough. It was not enough. Yeah, Bamboo try to force out the Enigma away. It does not cancel, cancel channeling spells. Uh, it would be pretty sick if it did. But for now, it's another lost fight here for Mouseport. That one, they went deep in a tank. They were roaming around without sight. You talked about why it's such a bad thing. Kuroki ran down the ramp thinking he was safe. And before he knew the next thing, he was dead because he doesn't see the enemy hero. They were playing blind and he definitely paid a heavy price. It was a pretty good Ravage. And of course the black hole was there, but the shackle shot made it a little bit better. But despite of that, they still lost a lot of heroes. Yeah, it was a nice shackle, but they just need a little bit more. Really what they need is Kuroki in the fight. He can't die at the beginning. He's too much of their damage right now. Lycan just isn't strong enough right now. And there's so many ways really? to deal with... Yeah, EMP Tornado, just some harassment. They're not actually going to go in. There's so many ways to deal with this Lycan right now. Aside, aside from Fiend Script, they have the Black Hole, which we saw there. They have Cold Snap. There's no BKB, and sure, you'll be, there's still two ults that go through it, but everything else is now such a problem for him. I, to me, Black can't really fight unless, it's, unless they have an advantage and they're running down EG. Bamboo lagging a little bit behind. Oh, he's got to be careful. Nightmare has such a long range. One thing we haven't talked about Nightmare is one of the few spells in the game from a support hero that if he finds somebody, he allows his entire team to catch up. If you look at Nightmare, it's what, 7, 8 seconds of disable? Yeah, 7 seconds of disable. Oh, yeah. If you get caught out alone, the enemy entire team will be right next to you in a matter of seconds, and you can't do anything about it. Oh, Black waiting on the low ground. The positioning it again a little bit awkward for Mouse. There's the tornado. Not gonna find anyone. A rare miss from Bulba. Bamboo thinking about going in here. Sing Sing fishy around for an opening. No item progression whatsoever. This is definitely a different style of Tiny from TC. Can Sing Sing continue to find those openings? He's got a suit. Four staff and not gonna actually go in. Fear just farming away bottom. The longer mouse sit mid, the farther and farther ahead Fear is gonna get. They gotta make something happen with this push. Sitting here is getting behind right now. Right. Sooner or later, you gotta defend top. Creep will have been very close. Same thing with bot. And at which point, EG will just go in the Roche pit and take that Aegis for free. They do oh, black. Oh, no. He cannot get initiated upon. Where's his ultimate? Shackle shot. That's gonna latch on to. Here comes Fear. He comes in. Oh, Bamboo gets grip. He's done. Meanwhile, Fear on the front line. Not really exactly where he wants to be, but he's so tanky. Manta style. Oh, he's a big Sonic wave. The Ravage gonna be cast on everything. Kuroki now gonna get focused. Where's the Malefice? No Malefice just yet. All the right click finally a blink out but enough time more than enough time for eg to go into the roshan pit and claim the ages and kuroki may live blinks away tps out will there be a brain snap or sleep not in time top lane though the tower went down to creeps you talked about need to back to defend that push the racks now exposed at a third hp sing sing will defend it the racks will not fall but boy eg the door was just ripped off his hinges and thrown into the room EG can now easily enter and look to burn it down. Yeah, and when you have an Aegis on Morphling, that's easy enough. You have the Manta style as well, that's a great pushing tool. And now again, there's there's no need for EG to stop playing this kind of uh, global 
pushing that kind of thing. Four plus one Morphling on his own, he is not going to die, especially with Mantis style and Aegis. And of course, the other four is just applying so much pressure by simply their presence. They have a lot of chain sun. We haven't talked about the Bane yet, but I think this is a very successful game. Successful game to showcase why Bane deserving competitive pool. It's just doing a lot of small things, but those small things like locking down Lycan for a couple of seconds, gripping Kuroki for a couple of seconds, it's huge lockdown that not many other supports could give you. It is. I think he's still a situational pick, but he's in this situation, he's doing fantastically well. Maybe we'll see him a little bit more to deal with Lycan. The one spell we haven't even discussed is Enfeeble, and that is a great ability to have versus Lycan, even if you only get one point in it, but especially if you level it up. It's all about physical damage. And even if he's ever able to get it off, which he shouldn't be between speed and script and the sleep, but even if he's able to get it off, Enfeeble will really limit how much he's doing. Yep. And also, it's a rare ability that you could basically, quote-unquote, disable three heroes at once. Uh, you sleep one, you Enfeeble another, you fiend script a third. It's an ideal... Uh, ideal... <laughs> Ooh, ideal Black! Word. Black in the middle of nowhere, Mel! Where's the black hole? He wants it! He's gonna drop it! The Necro Bulk held in place along with the Wolf. Will they ravage for this one as well? No, they can't! The Cold Snap, the Four Step in! They need a little bit more! Is there gonna be a big Sun Strike from Invoker? No! It's Meanwhile Spear getting a solo kill on Kuroki. Looks like Universe helped them actually beyond Godlike and Fear. We're seeing yet another Morphling game for another, I mean, it's not always the same carry player, but yet another Morphling game where Morphling just gets absolutely out of control, is the strongest hero on the map, and has no fear whatsoever. Ha. <laughs> Second <laughs> time today we saw a uh, Black Hole being casted on a Lycanthrope. Seems like, uh, just based on these two uh, case study, as we see 1437 about to melt. Well, wow. that's uh, <laughs> that just two hits and a death to strike. Uh-oh, Sing Sing. Seems to easily about, blink out about, of this. In the words of Saint Saint, about that. Yeah, about that, yeah. Meanwhile, <laughs> top lane, Bamboo. Focus fire on the tower, but Bulba is here. Cold snap. It really feels like Mouse getting a little sloppy here, slipping up. Bamboo will take a fall. Easy kill. They're not yet ready to go Rex, but I think they can start pushing top now. They don't have Black Hole. Uh, I really don't think they need it, to be honest. But BKB up a Milk. Universe, 2150 on him, almost. If he wants to get a Blink Dagger, I think it would be a great choice this game. It seems like Mouse are able to just run away in a few cases, and being able to blink and sleep either Black or Kuroki, the Queen of Pain, the Lycan, would be absolutely huge. Yep, Morphling up to 4,000 gold. Uh, at this point, it's going to be a, it could be a Scotty, it could be a, uh, even a Heart. Get, uh, never mind, take that back. I forgot for, forgot for a moment, his best spell is Morph, so Butterfly always is a better choice. If you're just looking for HP, just get the Butterfly, because you can morph it back to strength. Um, also, it could be just a a Lincoln Sphere. I, I don't want to. I again, I still think it's a decent option. I, I really think whatever Fear wants is yeah. great. I, I think BKB would be the best choice though, just because then who's gonna deal with you, Lycan? You have so many ways to stop him from auto attacking. And I think Fear can win in a a one v one anyway against that Lycan, especially with Manta. And then Queen of Pain, a nuker. Oh, Fear goes deep. Once fourteen thirty seven, he <laughs> replicates out the magician himself. Gets away, gets a kill, and this is not a fun game to be CM. Can we just talk about that for a second? 14, 13, I, I said it. I said it during the pig band phase. She's slow, she's clunky, she's not able to keep up, and I mean, this is the other half that I didn't mention. It's like, what do you do? Yeah, boo. Too easy, another kill. Fear comes in. They want Sing Sing. Ravage hits again on everybody. Mobility ain't gonna help you if you get caught by the Ravage Black. Getting outright clicked by the support and the creeps. He takes a fall, and that's it. Fear, one more shotgun. I couldn't even move my camera there in time. Hopefully you caught it, but either way, EG, two games in a row. Not quite as one-sided as game one, but they absolutely demolish Mouse Sports. The team goes from 2-6 and six to 4-6. and six. Still a long way to go to be back near the top of the group, but it's some signs of life for EG, and it is big-time problems for Mouse Sports. Yeah, Mouse Sports, I mean... Starting at the loser's bracket could be a reality. There's a couple of matches today. Two more matches or two more matches for us to cast tomorrow. I, I'm not exactly sure how many matches Mouseport have left, but they better win a good majority of those or they're in big trouble. I believe it is actually three more matches unless something has happened I haven't heard about. Uh, next up, what do we actually have on the schedule? It looks like it will be... E home against MTW. This should be an exciting one. We have not got past E home yet, actually. That's one of the other teams, or have we? Excitement is a very, very subjective word, 
But I love MTW's turtle style. I love their conservativeness and E Home. Very, they are known for being conservative. So this is gonna be a good one. E Home is, and the game is up by the way as well. Cool. And we're the first one in for a change. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. I think it's time for coffee. I was feeling a little. Feel that game was that game got me down a little bit. I'm gonna pump myself 